What's up, people? I am back for another video. Today, I am reviewing a movie called Intruder, which was directed by Sam Raimi, of all people. <clears throat> and this movie, I am mixed on, because I, and I'm probably going to still title it Underrated Sam Raimi Gem, but I do have criticism. The premise pretty much is a group of co-workers working the graveyard shift and are basically murdered throughout the night. And it's they have a red herring where it's uh, Linda, who's the main character, her boy, her ex boyfriend Craig, I think is his name. He, um, they make it seem like it's him because he's like possessive and like he's all he's acting all irrationally and shit in the start of the film. So they make you think it's him, but we get the reveal that it's actually one of the coworkers and Bill because we get the reveal, of, not the reveal, but the movie starts off with basically revealing that Randy, who I think owns the store, that's Sam Raimi. Um, basically plans on selling it and this air goes my issue or one of them the motive for bill makes no sense i would have rather just been he didn't like the co-workers have it be maybe he knew he was getting fired or something I and mean, i guess that kind of happened but I, the idea that he did it because the store was closing so he decides to just kill everybody it's like okay that's a little that's a bit of a stretch even for a slasher but whatever um i do think the kills are great like they're very creative and there, there are scenes where the um, bill places each of like there's a scene where he puts one of the co-workers heads like sliced in half it looks pretty brutal like they don't hold back on the kills it's just the movie i also do think is a little bit slow in the beginning like i feel like that first 30 to 40 minutes until we get a kill it's like kind of slow and I'm all for building atmosphere, and I understand, like, Halloween, right? The first Halloween, there's not a million kills in that film, right? There's not even really an opening. Oh, no, yeah, there is an opening kill. It's when he kills his sister. But aside from that, like, there's no opening kill from Adult Michael that you see on screen. Adult Michael doesn't kill somebody on screen until Annie. So I'm okay they're not being kills all the fucking time. It's like an action movie that has a bit more of a story, and that's not action every five seconds. I'm okay with that if you at least still tell a good story. But I felt like here, um, the problem was it was just kind of slow. I also feel like it's a little bit formulaic. It's, I think they could have made much more use of the store. Because I like the idea of a, a slasher in a store. I think that's interesting, you know? Because people do work graveyard shift. And let's be real, that can be if that is a fear, depending on where you live. That somebody can just come in and just start offing your employees, your cut, you know? I think that could be a thing. But I feel like they just did not really make use of it as much as I really wanted them to. But overall, I still think it's a fun film, especially once the kills. Like, once you get to the kills, the movie picks up. There's a kill where um, Ted Rainey, Sam Rainey's brother's in it. He gets, like, stabbed in the back of the head pretty brutally. Um, one of the co-workers gets pushed in this, like, I think it's something that smashes meat or whatever, and he gets pushed in there and it smashes and you see, like, the blood. There's a scene he just gets stabbed, somebody gets stabbed in the gun, you see the blood spray, like, on the, the products, which that looks good. That was like, okay. Like, I really think once the kills start, the movie gets good. It's just that slow little beginning, and I do think it's a bit formulaic, and Bill's motive doesn't, and the ending is weird. Because the way it ends is Craig manages to knock out Bill when Bill has, because they're outside at this point. And I think they're, because she's trying to make a call, Linda is trying to call the police, right? And she manages to, but Bill breaks in, topples the telephone uh, booth and basically starts trying to stab her. But Bill knocks him out and then stabs him a couple times. But then Bill makes it, because the cops arrive, Bill makes it seem like they were doing the killing. So the, it is weird. The cops just arrest them and then Bill gets up and then she starts screaming. I don't know if the implication is, <clears throat> is he kills them. I don't, I get, maybe he was trying to go for a mystery ending, but it feels so, in a, it's such an abrupt ending that I do feel like they could have did a bit more with that ending, in my opinion. It just kind of abruptly ends. But other than that, the film itself is decent. I would probably give it a 7. I have some issues, but it's still a fun slasher once it gets going. I'll agree it's very formulaic. But I think Sam Raimi, you know, 
It sucks that you do get a cameo from Bruce Campbell. Apparently, when this movie was out, they did mark it like he was in the movie, but he's not really. He's in it for like 30 seconds. Sam and Ted Raimi are in it for two. No, not they're in it for a bit, but they're not really characters. They're just there until they get hurt, until they get killed, really. So, but overall, I still I had fun with it. I'd watch it again. I don't, I don't have a problem with this movie necessarily. I like that they do like don't necessarily show you who's doing the killings. You just see an arm most of the time. You don't actually see who's actually doing the killing. So I do like that they do try to keep it a mystery. The music is weird though. The, the, the music at times sounds like some weird like Halloween special, but not like but like a kid's Halloween special. It doesn't have that atmospheric sound which a slasher should have. Not every, saying everything needs to be Halloween, but you do need that atmospheric sound. Even Friday the 13th had that, you know? And I just felt like the music in this wasn't that great. Especially considering Evil Dead has a really good score. Like, even just the, ori the original music, like, just basic music of the film is good. I don't know. I felt like they could have did a bit more with the score, I feel. But overall, like I said, it's a 7 out of 10 movie. It's not bad. It's obviously not one of Sam Raimi's best. It's not up there with, like, let's say, the Evil Dead films. But this was fun. It did what it's supposed to. It's a decent 80s slasher. So, figured, why not review it? So, um, the plan is, later, I'm still going to be doing Exorcist 3. Probably will be around, like, I'm thinking 7 or 8 p.m. I'm going to record it. Because um, I don't have any plans later, so... I might do that around 7, 8 p.m. We might review, uh, uh, we'll review Exorcist 3. And then I'll figure out what I'm doing tomorrow because I don't know yet if I'm seeing Terrifier 3 tomorrow. So depending on if I see that tomorrow, we'll review that. But if not, I'll just do something else. But anyways, uh, let's get started on uh, Intruder. I'm honestly pretty much, I can't wait to watch Exorcist 3, though. That That's going to be fun. Because I've actually heard a lot of good things about that movie. I've seen I just don't remember it much. Because I think I just kind of watched it. And I probably don't even think I watched all of it. I think I watched some of it. So the movie <coughs> starts. <coughs> it kind of just starts, really. Um, Linda is talking with her coworkers. Her ex boyfriend tries to come in and kind of start trouble, like trying to get her, you know, get her to get back together. And the problem is with him, he's I think I love Sam Raimi, but I think he made it way too obvious that he's the red herring. Because he's all aggressive. He, he, there's even a scene later where it looks like he's watching, I think it's Linda, in like the bathroom. I to reveal this later that the reason he was there because he was trying to save her because he saw Bill kill, I think, Veronica may have been her name. She was one of the coworkers that thinks she was the first one killed, or the first or second killed. And, but basically, um, so she calls the cops, Bill and a couple of the other employees when, uh, he tries to talk to her, talk to Linda again. They basically throw him out, and they want to make you think he's the killer. And then while this happens, every the cold cup, the black the um, employees are in the break room, and uh, they're uh, basically Randy announces that he's selling the store, and yeah, so and that's important later. And then I think this pretty much when I'll just jump to when the murders start because. I like this movie, but man, that first 30 minutes is a bit slow. Like, God, I was like, I understand this film, you probably couldn't have an opening kill because you wanted to keep it a mystery because the killings don't start until after that announcement. But I don't know. I think you could have made that first 30-ish minute, 30 to 40 minutes a little bit more interesting because I do feel like it starts really slow. Like, I'll be honest, there's a point I was like, okay, this is kind of boring. <laughs> 
not boring, but I was like, okay, is this movie going to get going? And then it does. Like, once the kills start, I think the first kill, I think may have been Randy. And then just kind of starts working its way down. Um, uh, there's a kill where a guy gets smashed into a meat masher, which I'll admit, I'll be honest, that was a brutal kill. Um, where one guy just gets stabbed, but then you see the back angle where, like, the blood spray starts spraying. It's either in the back or in front of him, where the blood starts spraying on, like, the products, which, I'll be honest, that was kind of cool. Then we got Ted Raimi, uh, Ted Raimi's kill. He just gets sliced in the back of the head. Then a guy gets killed, um, uh, the guy who, they make it seem like initially that him and Linda were gonna have a thing. But he gets killed. So I do like that. And I do like that the kills, you don't actually see the killer. You just see a fucking hand. Like when one of them, the guy gets stabbed in the chest, you just see his hand and the knife. You don't, and then it's a blackness. <laughs> and the, I will say the lighting in this film is very well done. Because there's not great electricity. There's points where the lights just go out. I do think that stuff's cool. I just wish they maybe could have done a little bit more with the store. A little bit because I felt like there were some times, especially once we got to the chase with Linda, because it when it's pretty much down to Linda. Um, so Bill struggles with, uh, not, I guess he knocks out, um, uh, Rain, uh, Craig, Linda's ex boyfriend, out. Um, and then I think this is when. Linda pretty much realizes she's alone. I will say this. The film, once the kill started, the pacing goes up. It, like I said, that beginning is a little slow, but once you get past to the kills, it does, like, go rapid speed pretty much because now we're pretty much at the third act. Like, Bill, um, well, she starts finding bodies, and then obviously there's the scene that probably, the, I, I'm assuming it's probably the most iconic scene of every picture I've seen from this movie is this is one of the employees' face and it's, like, all sliced in half, and I think it was put in the refrigerator. So, and then there's a scene where she sees the, the guy, because there's a scene earlier where the guy comes down, like, this, like, conveyor belt-like thing, but this time he comes down, he's dead. So I will admit, like, when she finds the bodies and stuff, and then she goes outside, and that's when she sees Bill, everything seems fine, because, you know, he's a co-worker, and at this point, they want to make you think it's Craig. But then she sees Bill's hand, which is covered in blood. But I think the way she notices, is she could tell that's not his blood. That's somebody else's blood, clearly. Because you don't see a cut. You don't see anything like that. It's clearly somebody else's blood. So that's when she notices. And then this is where Bill it basically confesses to the killing and admits <clears throat> his motives. Which, and I guess he just, this guy was always psycho. Like, so he didn't want to sell this he didn't want the sword to get stolen and basically lose his job. That's essentially his motive. Which is fine, but why kill everybody else? I would have rather just he admitted, like, I just, I really just, I saw this as an opportunity. I don't, I don't really like these people anyway. Have it, something like that. I just think they could have did a bit more with the motive instead of, I don't want to lose my job. So you, you, if he had just killed Randy, fine, but he killed, like, everybody. So this is when the chase ensues, which, I'll admit, this chase scene was pretty cool. And I love the scene, like, where she hides behind, like, a, a store thing, you know, one of those store containers where they, uh, the, like, a store shelf. Like, I really do like that. And then he finds her and he tries to break in. Um, I think either a cop or somebody comes in because he realizes something's going on and then Bill kills that guy, which that was pretty brutal. brutal. And then basically the, ch the chase seems good until um, she runs into Craig, who basically can admits he saw Bill killing one of the co-workers and, and that's why he was watching her because he was trying to save her because it looked like Bill was basically about to kill her. That was what it was. I was assuming he was alluding to. But then Craig gets knocked out. Then we get another chase, but she manages to make it outside, um, call the cops, but the telephone pole gets knocked over and Bill has it, like, basically dead to right, but then Craig comes for the save, um, starts, knocks him out, knocks him down, and then starts stabbing Bill, but not, like, lethal, like, like, in the shoulder, I think is basically, 
And then this is where the cops show up, but Bill makes it seem like Craig and Linda did the murders and attacked him. So the cops arrest them, start to arrest them, which this this is where the scene gets weird because he gets up and then she starts screaming and then it cuts. I don't know if they were alluding to... Don't wrong, I don't mind a movie ending where you don't necessarily know the fate of certain characters. I like that sometimes. But for me, if you're going to do that, you've got to still have a solid ending. I felt like the way this ended was just very abrupt. And I don't know what happened. Like, but not in a good way. I'm okay with it. Like, the thing. The thing has a very much an ending. It has a direct, an ending, but there is a, you don't know what happened to Charles and McReady, you know? That's the thing. You don't know what actually happens to them, but it's still a, a still a, a, a clean ending. This is just kind of abrupt. It's like, oh, okay. I don't know if he got up and killed them. It was weird. I think one of the cops was Bruce Campbell, so it was cool to see Bruce Campbell for a little cameo. Um, but overall, I like this movie mostly. It's just the ending is a bit weird, and the killer's motive, Bill's motives, is a bit weird. The, the beginning is kind of slow. The music's weird at times. But everything else is good. I thought it had solid atmosphere. I thought a grocery store for a slasher setting works. Um, I thought the final chase scene was pretty good. The uh, creative kills. You know, this is an underrated Sam Raimi movie. Yeah, I have a little problem, but I would still call it underrated. Because this is one I've never heard of until today. So... And that's probably what I'm going to title. It's an underrated Sam Raimi gem. I think this is a very fun slasher. I'd definitely watch it again. It's definitely a good, even though it's not Halloween setting, but it feels like it, you know. So overall, I'd give this movie like a 7 out of 10. I thought it was a solid little slasher. So Later tonight, like I said, Exorcist 3 review. It'll probably be like early tonight, though. It won't be like really late. It'll probably be like 7 to 8 p.m. I'll probably record it. Uh, I'll probably do the recording for that. And then I got to figure out what I'm doing tomorrow because I don't know if I'm watching Terrifier 3 tomorrow or so. If not, it depends on when I watch it. I do want to see it in theaters. They are playing it in my theater. So I just got to see if I'm seeing it tomorrow, if I'm seeing it this weekend. So Though the day I see it is when I review it. So if I don't review it tomorrow, I might review it Saturday or Sunday. Probably not Saturday, actually. I just thought about that because I'm uh, for pin down. Fortunately, I got to suffer a, a shitty AEW pay-per-view in Wrestle Dream, so I got to watch that piece of shit, so depending on when that ends, I don't know if I'm going to want to do a video, because it'll probably be, because AEW pay-per-views are fucking long as fuck, so it depends on when I fucking get done with that, so I, I do want to hope, I hope though I can watch it tomorrow, because then I can just get it out the way and we can just review it tomorrow, so it depends on that, but uh. Other than that, this movie's all right. I definitely recommend it if you've not seen it. If you like Sam Raimi, you'll like it. If you like good kill effects, you'll like it. It's not the greatest film in the world, but it's a decent enough slasher, so I figured why not talk about it. But other than that, um, pretty much gonna be ready to call it here. Sorry about that. Jesus. Talk to y'all later.
Talk to you a little bit later today. Pin down podcast, most likely Saturday. <coughs> Subscribe. Peace. <coughs>